Welcome back to Split the Party. I'm your host, Steve Osmond. Today I have my friends Kilo and Jeremy Halleck, and we're going to be talking about hidden role games. Uh, they've evolved quite a bit since they were originally started out as sort of a psychological experiment. Uh, maybe you're familiar with games like Two Rooms and a Boom, Werewolf, uh, Coup, Resistance. There are a number of different games out there. We're just going to kind of talk about the ones that we like, what we like about the mechanic, uh, some of the things that we don't like about how it's used in games. Uh, Kilo, you've played a lot of these games with me and with other people. Yep. Um, what, just first, what is your favorite hidden role game? Uh, honestly, I think one of my favorites, I'm not even sure if it actually exists as a full release yet, is Two Rooms and a Boom. I'm not sure if that one's actually out fully released yet. It's been kickstarted and it's been out yeah. there for a while. You can get a print and play, uh, but... It's been out publicly enough that people have been able yeah. to have access to Everyone it. Everyone knows what it is. It's a yeah. game and it should be on the shelves either soon or now. I'm yeah. not entirely sure. Uh, but I absolutely adore that one. I actually spent several hours playing that one at Gen Con last year with the designers and I had a hell of a time. Yeah, it's a lot of fun playing these games at the conventions when you've got a lot of people involved. Oh yeah. Um, and for those of you who don't know, in Two Rooms in a Boom, one person is playing the president, one person is playing the bomber, and everybody else is on one of their teams. And you are trying to make sure that either the president is with the bomber or he's not with the bomber, depending on if you're with the terrorists or the non-terrorists. Um, it's a little bit different than Werewolf in that Werewolf, somebody is eliminated absolutely every single day and you're always getting people eliminated in Two Rooms in a Boom. Everyone survives the entire game. You find out who wins at the end. Uh, Jeremy, you haven't gotten a chance to play Two Rooms in a Boom with us, but no. you've played a lot of these games. Yeah, I've gotten terribly unlucky and never been around when yeah. that's played. We tend to not play it when you're here, uh, not by design, but I guess by poor luck. Uh, but what is your favorite game in this particular genre? I really like Resistance. Um, I like <clears> that <throat> nobody's eliminated. There's no person that uh, only plays for like five minutes and is done with the game. Uh, yep. It's a full experience for every player. Yeah, no and, matter what happens. Yeah, no matter what happens, everybody is finishing the game. Yeah, and that, and that is one of the things, as it has evolved, that's sort of more what they're leaning towards, is they started out with Werewolf and Assassin, and somebody was always being eliminated every single day. It's just not fun for one or two players. Yeah, yeah. and somebody early on gets involved. It's and, full participation for every player for the entire game, because as much fun as a game of Werewolf or Bang can be, there's a good chance, of, like Rob, I know, played in one game of Bang where he did not even get a single turn because he was done before it got yeah, to Actually, him. nobody did that first game. Everybody lost on the first player's turn. He killed everyone and just won the game, uh, which brings up an interesting point. So they also have another develop or another evolution of these games that are a little bit more combative. Uh, Bang and Shadowhunters are perfect examples yep. where mm -hmm. your roles are hidden but you're actively attacking the other players. It's going to be kind of a last man standing thing. You want to kill the players on the other team so that your team is the only one surviving, um, which is just another evolution of these. I really like Shadowhunters. We've, yeah, Shadowhunters we've all played that one quite a bit. Good one. Coup is similar, but it is a single player as opposed to uh, the teams where you get with a uh, bang, there's, you know, you're either a outlaw or mm -hmm. a actual deputy or the sheriff. Yeah. And so you're on a team in the in coup, it's single players, so uh, it fits a smaller player count, but it also includes elimination for everybody, so it's still down to one person. Yeah, and now that's that's one that I have not played. I've not played coup, but you did bring up an interesting point, the player count. One nice thing about these games is a lot of board games, uh, when you're playing them, they tend to fall in four to six players as a maximum. Like, that's fairly average, is four to six players. A lot of the hidden role games actually account for a a much larger player count. A lot count. of them tend to yeah. start at the bottom range yeah. for that. They That's start. A positive they and tend a negative, to start. Though. Yeah. So you exactly. You need to have enough people to play. But if you've got a big group of people, instead of having to split up into all these different groups to play games, you can all play Werewolf or Two Rooms in a Boom or all play Shadowhunters. You know, you can sit a lot more people down to the table and play these games. Which I know uh, for us, when we've gotten together with our group of mm -hmm. friends has been beneficial. There have also been times we've wanted to play it, and one, two, three, four, five, uh, we can't, yeah, yeah we can't fire this one it off. It can also do large, large player counts. Like I said, at Gen Con last year, I was in a game with 70-something people. It was insane. It was just yeah. wandering oh, around, twitchy, paranoid, weird, and so much fun. Yeah, and I, at Origins last year, actually played Werewolf. 
with a large, large group of people. I mean, it was over 100 people, and that they've actually got a, a variant that will cover up to, I think it's two or 300, something like that. And it was over 100 people. It's it was insane. a blast, yeah. It was chaos, and hard to keep track of what was going on in the large game, so you tended to focus on this little pocket. I've got a micro strategy that I'm trying to work along with everything else to sort of survive and be one of the people who succeeds, and it adds a whole different depth of strategy to the game. And not knowing almost all the people that are playing is probably a lot different than just playing in your regular group. That is a good bit. Uh, yeah. When you are at a convention or something playing one of these large games, uh, not knowing anybody around really changes it because we've played a lot of resistance together yeah. and I never trust you and I will never trust <laughs> you again. <laughs> Nobody trusts you, Kilo. We do, it's but we do develop fault. develop a bit of a meta game. We it, do we it's do also develop a, a meta game because game like the way they uh, originally developed. It's, yep. It becomes a mind game uh, back to where it originally came from because they were just psychological tests. And yeah. playing a game like that with the same group of people becomes a meta game, and it becomes you start to just understand a mind game. the way their mind works, and so you are working a little bit more strategically, a little bit less guess and check. Yeah. Uh, and that's almost how it feels at the conventions, even though it's a lot of fun. It's a little bit of guess and check. Like, let's poke and see how he reacts to this stimulus. Yep. How about to this one? And you don't know if that's just how they react in general. Yeah, on a exactly. Basis. I, you know, where that being said, I already know how you guys will react to general stimuli in these games because we've done this before. We've played all these games together. Mm -hmm. uh, it makes it a lot of fun, but at the same time, it changes what the game is doing. When we're playing it, it's totally a different game than if we're playing with a complete group of yep. strangers. Um, and it's always fun. I always like when we get to introduce somebody new to the game. It's here's all of us who have played this game a bunch of times, and here is fresh meat. By the Come way, on he's in. the Oracle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, I think that's probably all we've got time for today, guys. Thanks for coming in and talking to us. I'd like to thank our sponsors, Duo Bus Design, Sound G Entertainment, and Excelsior Games and Comics. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. Make sure you subscribe, and we'll see you out there in the Nerdverse. <laughs>